name is Cora, and welcome back to my podcast, Filmmaking, actually. (laughs) Ta-da! Apparently that's how I open all my podcast episodes. All right, so working as an independent contractor or freelancer has a lot of pros and cons. One of the pros, or cons, depending on how you see it, is you have 100% the free choice to charge or not charge as little or as much as you want. Okay, and obviously, you know, what you're actually going to get paid can vary, but what you decide you're going to work for, you control that. Reverse-wise, if you're hiring independent contractors or you're hiring freelancers, you can hire them for as little or as much as you can afford, or if you're a business-only business person, as little or as much as you want. Everyone pretty much knows that this is how this works, but still, everyone has rates, everyone has a budget. So why is it so hard to get or give a straight answer to the what's your rate, what's your budget standoff? I'm going to be totally direct, and I could be wrong, but I'm speaking from my experience. Now, freelancers don't want to be paid less than could be afforded to be paid to them, especially when they know what they're worth. Depending on what's happening in their life at the moment, They may also not want to overshoot and bid more than someone else would and lose the gig when at the end of the day, maybe it's their rent that would be covered versus not working at all that week. But they also know what they're worth. So even if they just straight up need the money, they don't really want to risk bidding lower than what was budgeted and then end up getting paid less when they could have been paid more if they had bid their actual rate and then gotten paid that or end up with a client that's paying them so much below what their rate is that it becomes a scramble to try and keep up with the work. On the other hand, those hiring the contractor know that there is almost always going to be someone else out there who might do it for cheaper. Usually the person doing the hiring is focusing on the bottom line and they want to spend as little money as possible on the highest quality product possible. Capitalism versus corrupt capitalism aside, the bottom line really is the bottom line. Sometimes a production only has a certain budget and that's all the money that they have. Um, Sometimes there's things that are a hard and fast lock. You can't change that. You know, you're working union, SAG has rates, you have to hit those or that's it. You're filing a location fee, you're getting a certain type of insurance. There's certain things that are a certain price that you're not going to get around. So what happens? The freelancers don't totally trust the people hiring them to actually pay them what they could really afford. And the people hiring the freelancers don't trust the freelancers to give them the best deal when maybe they could have gotten it for a little bit less, even if the freelancer is actually worth more. Now, I'm going to say something about the people who hire the freelancers. There is an old saying in the creative professional industry. You can have anything you want, cheap, fast, good, but you can only pick two. If you want it cheap, more often than not, even if it isn't fast, it isn't going to be good. Or... It isn't going to be as good as if you hired somebody with maybe a little bit more money to do it right. If you want it super fast, it's usually going to be a little bit more expensive because the person has to put aside everything else and just focus on your project. If you want it good, it usually takes some time and you have to pay professional rates. I once worked with a non-professional talent who ended up causing some drama on set, as can happen, and then they decided that they had a personal disagreement with some of the scenes and they didn't want to do them. Thankfully, it was a fairly small project and the risked loss was less digits than, say, a several hundred million dollar studio film. But I can say that I will never hire them again because I can't trust them to do their job. And I know that if I had hired a professional, at least the professionals that I usually work with, that probably wouldn't have happened. And again, cheap, fast, good. I went with somebody newer. Their rate was lower. It wasn't as good (laughs) as it could have been. Um, Now, in the name of transparency, I did once add thousands of dollars to a budget to hire a quote-unquote professional who I personally hadn't worked with since I was basically an intern myself. But last I had worked with them, they were literally one of my professional heroes. Like, I kind of wanted to be them when I grew up. When we got to set and started out day one of filming, they had the absolute worst attitude. Like it was like a completely different person. They were cursing at me, screaming at the DP, screaming at and threatening the producers. It was literal actual hell working with them. And it was a really weird dynamic for me because I was suddenly their boss and I had no idea how to handle them. They cost us hours and hours of time. We ended up going two days over on the original shoot. It was just a problem. So why am I contradicting myself with these two stories? Because you have to hire the right professional. 
get references, have them do something on spec if you want to test run them, whatever. But having that extra money spent upfront to do it right, more often than not, you're going to be able to save money in the long run. So if you're hiring people, if you're hiring freelancers, if you want an actual professional doing a professional job, you need to plan to pay them fairly. I do have a future episode planned on budget and budget planning and all that, but I'll say this. If you're going to benefit from the finished product in any way, whether it's financially or with accolades or even just with potential future work, and there's money in the budget that will be a profit to you, you need to figure out how to allocate some of that to support the people supporting you. I think I've mentioned this one before, but I once offered to help a newer production team as their set designer slash art director as an intern. I could use the connections and I was under the impression that they basically had no budget. They gave me $100 cash to use to buy all the props and set dressing needed for a very opulent setup. I ended up working for about three days, one shopping using my car and gas and paying for parking because Los Angeles, (laughs) and one day making several of the props by hand. And one day actually on set where I brought an assistant with me to help set everything up because it was a lot of work. Thinking they had no money, I used my skill and talent and knowledge of downtown LA and the 99 cent only store to stretch that $100 to cover everything I needed as far as materials. And I had about $15 left. I asked if I could keep the $15 because they weren't paying me. So basically I got a little bit of gas money and like parking, not even fully (laughs) covered. Um... A few days later, they asked if I could come back and help on wardrobe for their day two. Again, no pay, no gas, about an hour drive in each way to and from set. Like actual hour, not LA traffic hour. A short while later, I found out that their budget for the shoot was tens of thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands of dollars for a two-day video shoot. Even with some gear rental, location fees, LA permit fees, whatever, someone on that set is taking some money home with them. Needless to say, I've never worked for them again, and my opinion of that production team is really low. And granted, not all directors are aware of every line item on the budget, but if you're involved with the production side, and you're getting paid a few thousand dollars while other people are helping you achieve your dream for free, no. This is why freelancers always want to know what the budget is, or what the budget of the project is, or what the budget for that specific line item is. Because... It sucks to think, oh, okay, I'm going to do these guys a favor. I'm going to be a good person. And then you find out they're just taking advantage of you. That literally is why it is so hard for people to be nice because they have to deal with being taken advantage of for being nice. And it sucks. So don't do that. For the person on the hiring side, I'm addressing this to you. Partially because more often than not, the conversations that I have are about hiring others. But personally, I put a teeny bit more weight on the hiring side of this standoff, as it were because the person hiring actually does have the higher card. They can always go find someone else to hire. If you have a budget to actually pay someone and you're in the position of paying them, pay them fairly. If there is an exact rate that you want to hit, say that. If there's a range that you could fall into, say that. And also, like, don't be one of those job postings that lists an entry-level position requiring a doctorate and 15 years of experience with a starting salary of $12,000 a year. With all that rambling, is there a way to get past this standoff, actually? In a word, yes. Well, actually, lots of yes. In my opinion, it starts with shifting that place of mutual skepticism and doubting of honesty from both sides. Because let's be real, that doubt is usually founded in experience, so only by both sides changing that experience can this actually change. And look, I know this is so insanely idealistic, but if you don't try and no one does it, nothing is ever going to change. So this is my hoping that maybe it can at least start to shift the sands a little bit. Instead of going into the conversation thinking, this guy's gonna screw me over. The company has got to respect that the freelancer is actually skilled and qualified enough to do the job and do it well. That the rate is not because they're just trying to squeeze the company for the maximum dollar, but because they're actually worth that and that's the product that the company is going to get in value. Fellow freelancers, Freelancers, be honest about what you're worth. Lying about your skill set and value will only mean you find yourself in that crap, I can't get work at a fair price at some point down the road because you contributed to that prevalent distrust of those hiring freelancers by charging top dollar when you had no idea what you were doing. Remember, this standoff exists largely because of mutual distrust and it needs to be moved into a place of trust. I know, 
I know, this is super idealistic. <laughs> but if you don't confront the ideal, you can never work to get closer to it in any way, and you just stay stuck in this other end of the spectrum at horrible forever. So yeah, be realistic, but being realistic doesn't mean underselling yourself either. I once had somebody ask me if I could create an IMDb page for them and they wanted to pay for it. IMDb Pro costs money per year and they would rather hire someone once to set up their page versus pay for their own account. And it was less for me to do it than for them to pay for an account. So that's fine. You know, good deal. The problem came in what was supposed to be a quick turnaround turned out to be a very sloppy presentation on the information from them. A pile of photos for me to sift through and choose, which was totally random because I had nothing to do with the project and had no idea which photos to use, a bunch of emails back and forth, and way too much time for what it was worth. I finally told them, look, I'm sorry, this is taking way longer than anticipated. I've done most of the work. I'm going to invoice you for the time I've spent, which was less than the total agreed on because I hadn't finished. And that was it. In reply, they wanted to give me a gift. <laughs> I don't remember the exact word they used, but it was so condescending and this weird like, they're going to do me a favor by bestowing cash upon me for my time. And it was literally like barely a third of what I said it would cost. And I had done about 90% of the work. It was really hard for me because at that time, I also kind of needed the cash. And, you know, any money is better than no money, right? No, not like that. After a long conversation with my parents, who I have to say have always been incredibly supportive, I'm very lucky there, and my husband, who, no surprise, agreed with them with no hesitation whatsoever, <laughs> because they were right, I ended up replying to the email, letting them know that this was a for hire service. My time was valuable, and I did not feel comfortable in the professional relationship as it had developed. With that, I hit the little refund button for their gift, Gave them their money back, took about 30 seconds, just deleted the work I'd done as it hadn't been properly paid for, and their gift was really a pittance, and the whole making it a gift was just a really weird vibe. It wasn't like a, hey, let me pay you for the time. It was like, I'm going to gift you this. Uh, this isn't, you're not gifting me. I earned that. Needless to say, this particular person was shocked that I wasn't grubbing after their money and that I would rather stand up for myself and my self-respect before clinging to pennies. They sent me a pretty nasty email, and in it they said that they felt like I had ripped them off all along because they had found some company online that would do their IMDb page for like 20 bucks or something like that. I said, great, I'm glad you found someone who can get your page set up for your budget. And for a minute, I actually felt like, well, maybe I should have just charged $20. No, just no. I had spent literally hours digging through the credits on their film, going back and forth with them as to who was already on IMDb and what was their page, so I made sure I didn't link the wrong person. Who was it that they didn't actually want to create an IMDb page for? Which, side note, producers, you are literal poop wipes if you think you are going to go through the credits of your film and say, well, that person was only the blah, they don't need IMDb credit. You're making an IMDb page? You're crediting people? Credit everyone who brought your film to life, even if they were just the whatever. Anyway, I kept my self-respect, and wouldn't you know it, I got more work shortly after, because I was focused on that and not kissing the person's shoes for pennies so I could be blessed by their spare change. It's okay to know what you're worth. If there is some huge company out there creating IMDb pages in full for 20 bucks, good for them. I hope they have enough overhead covered and they are paying their employees fair wage for their time and they don't go out of business due to mismanagement and they're able to continue to provide employment for their workers. What's the point of all this? <laughs> Those standoff conversations of what's your rate, what's your budget can be circumvented by one side just bluntly circumventing it. And I know this can happen because just the other day, inspiration for this episode, <laughs> I was talking to a seasoned actress we were looking to hire and she knew that I'm an indie producer and well, indie producers aren't exactly known for their budgets. I went over what we were looking for and asked her what her rate was. She replied with the standard, what's your budget? I went first. I told her that our budget hadn't been set yet and it wasn't. I mean, I knew what we were originally planning, but we also weren't originally planning to hire a professional actress. So jumping out of the very, very indie realm into the more established realm, I knew that what we were planning was going to have to change. I didn't tell her that, I just said our budget hadn't been set yet. The project had already cost a significant amount of money and I let her know that. I said that we were wanting to ensure that everything was completed at the same level it was created so the money spent was not wasted. The reason we were circling back from our original plan of just going with somebody completely independent and unprofessional was we realized we actually did need a professional and in doing that we knew we were going to have to increase our budget. 
We weren't locked to a number because we knew that we wanted to afford the quality of what was needed and the professionalism to actually have it done right. I was honest with her and told her that if she came back with thousands of dollars a day is my rate, we most likely would not be able to cover that. But we also understood that she was someone with professional skill and training and experience, and we weren't just paying for her time doing the work. We were paying for everything she came with. She really appreciated that, and she was honest in return. She said it wasn't thousands of dollars, but it would be hundreds of dollars a day is her normal rate. And we said we can work with that. And to be fair, she didn't come back with an exact number either because she did want it to work out and she was trying to support us. And that was really awesome of her. She could see that we were making a genuine effort and we were, so she did too. Standoff averted. We got a straight answer and we could confront for ourselves if we can afford her. And she got to be honest with us and didn't have to compromise on what she's worth or at least what she's willing to work for when it comes to an indie project. Because let's be real, the value of a day given to a giant corporate project where people are being paid thousands of dollars to breathe, and the company is going to get millions times back whatever they spent because it's marketing or an ad or whatever, those companies should pay in full for every second spent. And as an indie artist, I know a lot of other indie artists, myself included, who would bend the rules on our rates if it means helping somebody out or like taking cute pictures of our friend's kids or filming a friend's wedding. But we also have awesome friends who don't expect us to do it for free. So it's easier to want to offer because we know it's valued. We know they aren't just looking for a free ride. And when it's something we can do, we're happy to help. With that, freelancers, be honest about the range you can work with. One of the things that I always find to be super helpful is when someone is looking to hire me for something, I usually ask them, what is their dream? What is their budget? And then we try and see how we can maybe adjust that dream to fit closer to their budget if their budget is something that would be worth working in. One of my favorite conversations about this was with an actress who was talking about her, you know, fellow filmmaker friends and how there's like this joke of, I have a movie that I'm making and it's going to be amazing and we're going to go to outer space and we're filming it on location on the moon. And it's like, wow, that's amazing. What's your budget? Five (laughs) dollars. No, (laughs) that just doesn't work. Sometimes as producers, we don't honestly have the budget for something or like for us personally, we only have whatever little bit we have in the budget for that portion of whatever part of the project we're covering. And we'll straight ask someone, hey, we need this, but we only have available in the budget this much. Would you want to do it? Because sometimes a little extra cash on a random day that you're not otherwise working can be nice. But they also know me and they know my company and they know that whatever the max is that I have to offer, that really is the max and that's it. And they know that either I'm getting paid nothing or I'm getting paid a very small amount if I'm not offering them their rate. And they know that if they say no, that's totally fine. And I'm not going to be like, oh, I asked them and they said, no, I'm never calling them again. Um, And they also know that if they take it, I don't immediately go, ha, that's their rate. If they take it, it means that they are both doing me a favor and collecting some extra cash. And I know that I need to make sure not to do that too often. And I need to at least offset it with full rate gigs as much as possible to make sure that I'm staying respectful of their time. I also have a responsibility to be responsible with my own budget. As a creative, that means my personal budget as well as my professional one. I have an assistant who works her butt off and does an amazing job. If the company is having a slow week and she still has an invoice for her hours, at the end of the day, she's my assistant and she's choosing to use her time to work to help me make my dreams and the dreams of this company come true. So her work is not a donation into the cup of Cora. It's a professional choice of how she's investing her professional time. And if it means that maybe I don't go out to dinner a couple times or I don't buy something I'd like to have because it would be nice to have it, but it means that I have some extra cash to invest back into my company to cover her paycheck that week, the fact that she got to be part of my projects that week is not a paycheck. The fact that I benefited from her time and my company was moved forward because of her time means that she needs to be paid for her work. And I don't get to go on a splurge day because I felt like it while she's working for me and needs to be paid. I know this all sounds like kind of high and mighty and whatever, and it isn't like, you know, I don't pay my own bills and I don't eat and my husband and I are total martyrs because obviously that's not true. But good people who do good work for me and make themselves to where I couldn't have anyone else just step into their shoes and take over because that's how awesome they are. If they're working to make my dreams come true, I need to work as hard to make theirs come true too. Speaking of, If as a producer, you make a movie or you do a project for pennies and then you turn around and sell it for millions or make a huge profit, 
Don't forget the people who worked for less than their standard rate to make that happen for you. If someone was irreplaceable on a project, don't just profit on that work. Remember, the people who helped get you there, go back and pay them for their help, even if it's just a slight bonus. If you made extra cash and actual profit beyond your own pay and money invested, you really should share that with the people who professionally did their jobs and were awesome. And if that is like uncomprehensible in a purely capitalistic brain, just think of it from the standpoint of then they'll think you're a good person and they'll probably help you out again in the future. But also there's nothing wrong with altruism and being a good person. And there's something to be said for what it means to take the time and effort to go back to the people who genuinely you couldn't have done it without them and make sure that they are fairly compensated. At the end of the day, there are a lot of ways around this standoff, but it starts on those hiring and respecting the value of the freelancer and not trying to save a few bucks so they can go out and buy themselves something or so they can cash in more of their own paycheck. And freelancers, you know, being open and respecting the budget. But at the same time, know your own rate. Don't misrepresent what you're worth on either side, high or low. And it could even mean starting the conversation of hiring with, we know you might be out of our budget range, so we're just curious what it would cost as we respect you and your time and we want to ensure you're fairly compensated. Or, you know, if you're just reaching out, um, one of the best job posts I ever saw said, I don't remember exactly what it was and it was worded much better, but the gist was basically, we're not stuck to a dollar value, we're stuck to this project. So while we put our budget together, because that's also a thing, you know, I've done things where maybe we're able to bring one line item down to bring another line item up to fit somebody's budget, or maybe we want to add somebody in and we don't have the flexibility for it, but we have a certain amount. You can move things around. So the way they made the post basically said as much that their driving force was the best fit for the project. And the person who said it was Ansley Sawyer, and she's amazing. And if you ever have the chance to work with her, I highly recommend you take it. But um, the way she worded it was um, as true to her, much more eloquent. Um, But that approach, I think, is very responsible from the hiring side. If you're being hired, you can say things like, this sounds like a great project. I would love to help. I can have some flexibility, but I also have my rates. So why don't you let me know what the budget range is you're thinking that you'd like to land in and I can see what I can do to meet you there. Everyone has a budget. Even if the budget is, well, we can only afford this much total for the whole project. There is some semblance of a budget. Once in a while, I've had people come to me where they are just brand new starting a project and they're curious what the project could cost. And unfortunately, that's a very hard question to answer because until you have a script and a breakdown or more more of a solid layout, it's very hard to put an actual dollar range together. But even then, you can kind of have a discussion of what they're looking for and get a concept of, okay, you know, this is going to be a $10,000 project or this is going to be a $20 project. Like it, it really depends and you just have to have the conversation. And as a freelancer, you really should have a rate, even if it's just, you know, I can't afford to work for less than this because at the end of the day, your time is your time and what is being paid for is your knowledge and your skill and your experience that you're bringing to the table. Respectfully bring those into the conversation. Where would production like to land? Where would the freelancer be willing to work? Freelancers, I know I said the onus is on the one doing the hiring, but you actually have a lot more power than you think. You can totally ask what the budget range is, where they would like to land, get an idea for the project of the whole. Be respectful of the fact that they do have a budget, especially if it's an indie project. And if it's a good project or you know you could use the work, be willing to work with them. But also, you know, hold your ground on your own rate. Sometimes I ask people, what is your commercial rate when I have a large budget? And what is your indie rate when I have a smaller budget? Short version, the solution actually depends a lot on trust and communication. And that means getting past the distrust. Best part, as a freelancer, you do have the power to say, I respect your budget. May I ask where you're looking to land for this particular department, area, line item, whatever, and then see if it's worth your time. Sometimes $150 for a whole job is crap and not worth it. Sometimes even thousands of dollars becomes tens of thousands of hours and again, not worth it. Sometimes a few hundred bucks becomes more because they decide to add on new things. Sometimes it just becomes an awesome project or it becomes a great working relationship. Your time and your money as a freelancer are the two things that you get to invest in your career. The real secret of it all is you literally never know 
And at some point, you have to be willing to go with it and have good contracts in place and all of that. But at the end of the day, when you're standing at that juxtaposition of what's your rate, what's your budget, try and have a conversation about it. And producers, people hiring, be willing to respect the fact that the value of the person and what they're bringing to your company, that person is making the decisive choice to dedicate themselves to your purpose, to your mission. They're spending their time helping you and your company. And even if they're a PA running and getting coffee, they're doing a task that frees up you to be able to do the rest of your job. And that has value. And freelancers, know your worth, be respectful of yourself and be respectful of the other side and be willing to have a conversation about it. Hopefully that helps. I know this is all very idealistic. I wish there was just like a one shot answer, but I think that just having those conversations and both sides kind of being willing to shake loose a little bit, uh, hopefully will help that in the future. Anyway, yeah, that's it. That's my podcast episode. Thanks again. Um, that's it. You've been listening to Filmmaking Actually with Cora Linda, Space Dream Productions podcast. Subscribe to us on any or all the podcast platforms, but we especially recommend our sponsor, Anchor. If you like what you hear, leave us five-star ratings and positive reviews on iTunes and Stitcher. It helps more listeners like you discover the show. But the best thing you can do if you really like the show is tell a friend. Want to leave a comment or ask a question? Email at filmmakingactually at gmail. Com. This is Spacey speaking, and what's your rate? Well, I'd love to talk to you more about the project and find out if there is a... Pass. No, oh, come on, no, it's the whole point of the episode. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. I am DBB. <laughs> so her work is not a donation into the cup of Cora. This is her professional choice of how... Sorry, I feel like I made a weird noise. <laughs> be respectful of... Be respectful of... Uh, be respect... Mm. Be respectful of... Why can't I say this? Anyway, yeah, that's it. That's my podcast episode. Um, I hope it was recording because I wasn't actually watching. Uh, yep, there it is. All right. <laughs> Thanks again.